This college basketball picks and American East Big Sky and Southland Conference Tournaments edition of the Sports Game of Podcast is brought to you by Cut. Cut is a peer to peer social betting platform that's US based and available in 40 states. Head to cut.com, that's K U T T dot com, and use promo code SGPN for a 10% deposit bonus. We're also brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Play their fantasy pick them for a chance to win 100x NBA, NHL, college basketball, and more. Sign up today using promo code SGPN to get a 100% deposit match. We're also brought to you by Champs. Run your own March Madness pool and enter Champs free bracket contest for a chance to win $1,000. Go to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash champs to enter today. We're also brought to you by Hall of Fame Bets, the sports betting research platform for parlays, player props, and game lines. Download the Hall of Fame Bets app or visit hofbets.com. Use code SGPN to get 50% off your first month and start making smarter bets today. Hey, everybody. Joe Theismann here. You're listening to SGPN. So do this. Let it ride. The sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean Stacking the Money Green. We'll talk partner and picks. Ryan, real money. Kramer, what's happening, Kramer? Dog. Hello, friends. Have we recovered from the <laughs> night of, of pillaging? No. Oh, rowing man. down those beautiful rivers into England. Skull, 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 skull. Jumping over their bitch ass walls. Now, do the do the North Kentucky Vikings also yell skull, or is that just a oh wait, Ryan, are you wearing the exact same shirt? Are we matching? Yes, we are both wearing the original SGP since 2011 t shirts. You can get your own uh in the Sports Game Podcast store. A uh, promo code madness, fifteen percent off everything. Let's go. Joining us to tout a little college basketball, give out some winners. Colby Dant, aka Hick Dundee. What's happening, Colby? Good day, Mike. Good day, Mike. <laughs> got an echo. Got an echo. You got God an echo. Oh no, I had a lot to do. I'm sorry. You know what happened was uh, my my watch got stuck as I was trying to rip off my sweatshirt to expose this beautiful original SGP shirt. <laughs> Sorry, Colby. You look nice too. Go O's. <laughs> Colby's rocking his O's uh, hat. What do you? What do you got tired of? Uh, you ashamed to promote the college experience, Colby? This is merch well, madness. It's, it's merch madness. So I figured, you know, you don't. I, don't sometimes know. you don't like being the the guy at the concert with the band of the concert. You know what I mean? So I don't yeah. know. I'm actually wearing an SGP hat. SGP t-shirt, drink it out of an SGP, two separate SGP coffee mugs. Yeah, it remind uh, me of Garth in Wayne's World, where he says these people just sell out. Remember, he's wearing like all Adidas. Yeah. <laughs> it's not selling out if it's your own shit, is it? No. Uh, oh, look at the, and then I got the DJ University mug. My daughter <laughs> goes to school in a rotation of uh, SGPN athlete sh- sweat hoodies, different colors, baby effing whale. A hoodie, which he has yet to get in trouble with. So shout out to and DGNU. Uh, apparently, the DGN University hoodie disguises well as a reg. It looks like an actual university. Skull. So people don't ask questions. Stay tuned. I- uh, we will be opening up applications for the first inaugural class. For DJ and University, so stay tuned. Oh, for that. I like this. Let's I plan on putting White Tiger in uh, kindergarten dressed as Bobby Petrino. Put him in the neck brace. I, neck I brace. Know, do they I'm make gonna, baby I'm neck put braces? So, uh, I'm gonna have to, uh, you know, have him fall on his on his bicycle a couple of times, so he's got some <laughs> road rashes on his face. Uh, but it, uh, I'm looking forward to the challenge. Sean just had an in- insane idea about uh, how, how draft day and DJ and University could potentially work together. Mm. Saying maybe we send some young DJ to you know a little little DJ scholarship. Oh, I like that. Uh, Ryan. You know, little shout out to the little Lebowski, <laughs> Urban little, uh, little Lebowski <laughs> Urban Achievers Fund. Uh man, lot to get to. Of course, shout out to Cut. Have you guys signed up with Cut yet? K U T T dot com. If you haven't, 
What are you waiting for? First off, you get the 10% deposit bonus when you use a promo code SGPN. You can't just write in all caps lock. I heard it on Sports <laughs> Gambling Podcast. They did get that feedback. You got to enter the promo code <laughs> so you can get the 10% bonus. It's the ultimate put your money where your mouth is platform. Uh, I'm going to be uh, dropping a little, uh, little change over on the old cut uh, social betting platform. Again, great for college basketball. You're sitting at a B dubs talking shit to someone. They're saying, uh, you know, your bracket sucks. Oh, my bracket sucks. Settle it like men. Go head to head. Duel. I mean, if uh, Aaron Burr was around uh, during uh, during uh, when cut was available, maybe they could have settled it via a sports gambling duel instead of just killing each other unnecessarily. Think about it. If you die, that's less time you can uh, gamble on sports. Cut also gave us conference tournament buzzer beater over under set at one and a half. Uh, super fun, and they'll list almost anything. They tell me I got to say almost, almost anything that has a verifiable income. You can request to have that bet on cut, get action on equal sides, and again, since it's head to head, you get an amazing price. Cut.com promo code SGPN, and also we're brought to you by Champs. That's right, Champs is your home uh, for setting up your own bracket pool and enter Champs's bracket pool for a chance to win. 1000 bucks. That's right. Pretty easy to do. You just go to sports game on podcast.com slash champs. That's right. Champs uh, hosting a free March madness bracket contest for a chance to win 1000 bucks. And if you uh, host your pool on champs, you also get a free entry. So you get, you get one free entry regardless, but you can get a second one. If you host your pool over on champs. All right, so I was chuckling, Sean. Yes, mm-hmm. saw the chat was trying to distract you with some uh, buttery crust talk. Oh yes, little C's. I wish, I wish, but uh, feel free to still support little C's, even though their uh, ad deal <laughs> ran out. But they got great feedback. They said they loved you, maniacs. Appreciated all the people <laughs> reaching out about how they heard pretzel crust reads on the sports gambling podcast. Some have suggested. Putting the P uh, as G pretzel crust. Oh, network. interesting. So we'll see. We're considering that, but uh, we'll see if we end up pulling the trigger. Sports gambling, comma pretzel crust. Yeah, now it might sell. It might sell, you know, a little better. All right, let's. Uh, we we uh, mm-hmm. wait, Colby. Hi. We got we got not we got numbers. We got numbers. Prick Dundee. It's gonna be a lot. Of a little, course. Uh, fabulous segment live on the air. Uh, we, so real quick, we should tout a little bit uh, while Prick Dundee scrambles to pull out his measuring stick and abacus. Sean, yes, uh, I I may have had I I think in doing the final tally, and I wasn't even uh, I would say I was not betting irresponsibly yesterday. I may have had the best college basketball day on the season. <laughs> oh my god! Yes, and you, it hit, might not you hit your Cleveland State plus nine and a half. Northern Kentucky on the money line and Arizona lay nine and a half. I had Cleveland State as my money line. Oakland minus three and a half. Never in doubt until it wasn't uh, a little bit at the end there. And then the Salukis, man, we had a mega parlay uh, that was just you know they, what it they was. They had it and then they lost it. Sent it to double overtime. Uh, lost outright, but a uh, good run. The Vikings didn't travel with no bitch ass race dog. <laughs> You know what I mean? That that was the problem here. We had the Norse, yes. we had the Vikings, and then we had some little little uh, puny race dog. No offense, Saluki. Uh, but yeah, well, I I I did the normal thing, right? I bet the the sides I liked, which yeah. Northern basically nothing else mattered. Northern Kentucky and Cleveland State. I then also figured I'd bet the same amount on the money line. Then I decided to parlay them together. Then I decided to parlay them together with other things. Then I may have checked the round robin button a couple of times. Long story short, uh, it was like a fabulous NFL Sunday, and I came into I I honestly woke up this morning feeling like that when you crush it on an NFL weekend and you know you have a shitload of cash at your disposal. A lot of wham, Ryan, walking around I, money. I uh, you know me and the we and the wife went out for some brunch this morning. Uh, things things oh, were really wow. getting loose. Uh, yeah. So anyway. Um, Ryan's, that, all, that was, Ryan's that, all tipsy. That was my Moses. that was my tout. I, no, I, you know I don't. You know I'm not a, a, a consumer of the alcohol. Uh, but yeah. So anyway, uh, yeah, had a great. Uh, I'm I'm gonna be spraying the board uh, ha- early and often. Daytime basketball's been great. Got to sweat. Uh, shout out to the whores of Radford. They gave us a half. 
Why didn't we think to bet the first half? Because the whores had him tipsy. Whores got exhausted. All right, let's uh, let's get to and it. I'm so, sweating out my Belmont Bruins as we speak. Nice, and you know, uh, just so many so many things going on. I, the the daily conference is kicking off. Just already in that vibe of every day feels like two days. I was I was grading the sheet, and I was like, wait, I got another day to grade. Oh no, that's that's today. We haven't we haven't gotten to see the games we talked about last night. So still time to listen to that too. If you want to listen to two things at the same time. All right. Let's head out to a the Red River shootout on the hardwood or or whatever they call it, uh, whatever gang related thing they call it nowadays. Austin, Texas plays host to Oklahoma and Texas for the this, last. Oh, wait a second, this won't be for the last time. This this will be uh, the first of many in the new the new land of the SEC. Texas is laying six and a half here. Every time I def- I decide to hop on the Max A Smith's chains, I, I or train, I lose. Every time I hop on the Porter Moser train, I lose. Rock hard place has have come together here at 11 a.m. on Friday, March or I'm sorry, Saturday, March 9th. Colby, help. These are all uh, made up lines because none of the lines are out. Um, but what do you, mean? Uh, you mean they're prick Dundee originated numbers? Yes. Uh, okay. uh, so on Friday they always drop them really late. They drop them at like five or six. Um, it's so, also a weird time of the year. I understand. Um. Yeah. So just know that all of these lines are uh, originated by prick Dundee. Yeah. Got it. All right. Um, so what do you what the, are we play, doing here? Uh, the play, We're talking about uh, call, me, call me. You all right, man. <laughs> We're talking yeah. about college basketball. Okay. We're gonna get. I didn't out know if you wanted to game. continue saying something. I was oh, just. Oh no! I, I said lines. help, Colby. I said yeah. help, Colby. <laughs> um. Uh. Yeah. Look, this is a series Oklahoma has dominated uh, pretty much since the uh, 1940s, and uh, they do hold that lead. Texas has closed the gap a little bit over the past 10, 15 years. And uh, look, Texas won by 15 in Norman. Can Oklahoma get revenge in Austin? Um, I'm going to say no, just because Texas just got, you know, they gave up that big, that big lead against Baylor and ended up losing that game. I think Texas gets, uh, goes for the sweep against the Sooners. I will lay the six and a half. I just think they're a better team. And that, that environment at home is pretty lit. So um, lay it. I actually like Oklahoma in this spot. One, you mentioned the revenge angle. Two, I think six and a half is a is a hair high. I think it's going to be closer to like a three four point game. I see this as almost a one possession uh, affair here. I think Oklahoma is going to be able to hang around. They play really good defense uh, on the three ball. I think that's going to hurt some of Texas. Uh, what they like to do, they obviously they like to pile up some threes. I understand they're coming off that loss to Baylor, but I think that was kind of a defeating loss. Like they, they really outplayed that Baylor team for a decent portion of the game, really let it slip through the cracks there. And I, I think Oklahoma is coming in with the revenge on their mind. I think this is uh, going to be a bit of a, uh, a close game. So yeah, give me uh give me Oklahoma plus six and a half Kramer. Uh, well, I, I have news for you. This, this one is real. Uh, it's also this, this exists in the wild Texas minus six and a half. So oh, the, the okay. old prick Dundee originator back at it. Uh, nailed, nailed it. it. Bullseye. I, yeah, I, 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 I framed the whole game saying every, I can't seem to pick uh, get these teams, right? Uh, I am going to go home team here. I, I don't have uh, faith in Porter Moser, especially since um, Sean killed my sister Jean, bit. just like he hopes sister Jean uh, falls victim to death. Texas lay laying six and a half. I'll take it. Um, you know, I like the favorites. Creighton, and again, I think I think actually a lot of these numbers have uh, opened opened. So we have some numbers here. Creighton heads to Philly. Is this being played in Philly or did you just get Wells lazy Fargo? Right? No, this is oh, okay. this is Wells Fargo. Yeah, Cray- Creighton heads to Philly for a home neutral site game as Villanova is catching one and a half here. Uh, I can't seem to update the the sheet, so I, I don't know what's happening here. Uh, Creighton's laying one and a half on the road. Certain, I mean, but, but what's the what's the situation in terms of uh, Nova and, and making it in here, Colby? I would imagine this is a uh, important game. They're in the much more desperate spot for sure, and uh, you know they won at Creighton though, so maybe Creighton's trying to strike some revenge. 
uh, after after Nova early in the year won a Big East game in Omaha. I mean, look, Nova's playing good basketball. I was actually impressed with their loss. I still came away thinking they're playing much better basketball, even though they lost at Seton Hall. Um, I don't like how it's at Wells Fargo Center. I think that might hurt you a little bit. Why? So why do they do this? Is this just a money? This grab is like thing? the uh, yeah. This is like the St. John's Madison Square yeah. Garden thing. Um, uh, that could hurt them a little bit because I think you know Creighton. I think that only only helps Creighton. But uh, I am going to take Nova just because I think they're in the more desperate spot. They need it more. And also Creighton's been a little iffy on the road. Seven and four on the road. Remember last time they hit the road, Rick Rick Pitino just blew them out in the garden. So uh, yeah, load up on the Wildcats here. The Wildcats have been the better defensive team this year, surprisingly. Um, and wow. if they can get the offense going a little bit, they should be able to win this thing. So let's go. Also a bounce back spot. They just got punked by Seton Hall. That was a tough loss to Seton Hall. I felt like they were setting settling a little bit uh for too many three ball attempts. It was a weird game. It didn't feel like Seton Hall played a great game. No, no, they had their and Villanova had their chance there towards the end to make a run. Uh I did like the overall fight out of this Nova team. I think they'll get their offense sorted out a little bit and their defense continues to be pretty good. I think especially at home. Uh Colby mentioned it, but thirteenth ranked in adjusted defensive efficiency. Come on, Nova. This you got it. I got to get one of these, one of my fucking teams in the tournament, whether it's Syracuse, hmm. Lehigh, or Villanova. I need one. Give me Villanova is that uh, what this as is? a home dog. No, I think I think part of the handicap is they're a desperate team. They need this win to really boost their resume. Uh, yeah, uh, certainly an interesting matchup for for Villanova. Uh, I, I tend to agree. I, I was a little. When I saw Prick Dundee's number and I saw the actual opener, uh, I was a little surprised to see Creighton favored. Wrong team favored here. Ken, wow. Ken Palm even assigns this as a true home game uh, for Villanova. Doesn't call this a semi home game. Perhaps that's a, a nod to the city of Philadelphia, but it is interesting. They're not playing at their normal venue. Kansas heads to Houston, Texas. Great game here. New, new, new to the Big 12. But uh, certainly, uh, for them to be laying nine here against Kansas speaks volumes about the current state of Kansas more than anything. 1 p.m. on the West Coast, a tremendously large number. W- what's the plan here, Colby? Well, look, uh, Houston wins the uh, the outright number one seed in and the Big Twelve title. If they win this game, if they lose, and Iowa State wins the Farmageddon game in Manhattan, in Manhattan, then they split. But uh, I mean, who are we kidding? Houston, Houston's playing on an elite level right now, and and Kansas. Yes, it'll be interesting to see if McCullers a game time decision again, which this is like getting Belichick like with what they do there. Um, and real quick, it's at, it's eight, I'm seeing the number of the it's eight, so you're close. There we go. So uh, yeah, jump on. Uh, I mean, I'll take Kansas in the eight. I think it's probably be like four or five point game. But uh, yeah, I think I think Houston's going to win it in year one in the Big Twelve. How, how's that? How's that Big Twelve? Huh? You just let an AAC team come in there and whoop everyone's ass. This is crazy to take. I, I mean, I, I here's what I'm going. Here's what I'm debating in my mind. It's like Kansas is an eight point dog. That's tremendous value. But then wait, there's probably a reason Kansas is an eight point dog. They've been horrible on the road. ATS three and six. Uh, they beat Houston in Kansas. I think Houston might be a little fired up. To Colby's point, Houston needs this to lock up the one number one seed for the Big Twelve tournament. I don't know how much they care about that, but I still think somewhat motivating factor. But oh, then I, like I, I I think they care about their f- winning the f- the Big Twelve championship in year one in their. Yeah. After all the talk last year about how they 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 don't schedule any anyone good, you know, in the AAC they never. And then oh okay, well they joined the arguably the well. well yeah. What they they said was the toughest conference in college basketball. They is in the media, um, and they they ran shop and and fucked up the the best conference and Wait, makes you question. This, where is this? so? Hey, it, Colby once again making great point for the team he's picking against. I'll take well, Houston minus eight. It's too many points. Kansas normally always covers these big spreads. So well, they've been re- bad on the real road. quick Three question because th- this it really impacts the handicap. I'm seeing at a uh, at a, 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 a an offshore they have t- this game tagged as a neutral court. 
Ken Palm does not have as a, as a new neutral court, nor does does anywhere else. It's definitely not on a neutral site, right? This is one hundred percent in Houston, Colby. Uh, I mean, it's in. Let me make sure they're not playing I, like it. I yeah, said, no, this is at this is at their stadium. This is at their home okay, stadium. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And and yeah, I'm, I'm looking at an eight. Yeah, Fertitta Center. I absolutely love Houston at home. I mean, and it's a revenge spot. They got they got beat by Kansas earlier yeah. in the year. This to me, this is. Let's put this one aside, Sean, for the lock pile. Mm. Um, because I I have a feeling this the Kansas little chalky dog activity. It is a Saturday, you know the 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 snorkelers like to participate on the weekends. <laughs> Not like us true uh, scuba divers. Got my ninety meter certification, uh, Sean. Really? Just a quick update. <laughs> Maybe we should. Uh, maybe that's one of the Patreon pick em prizes we give out: autographed uh, deep sea di- diving helmet, and of course, <laughs> not real diving oh. helmet. The the costume ones we wear from Amazon. <laughs> Kentucky. I feel like someone would like that. Oh, I mean, I put Alan Cooley in the diving mask. Come on. Yeah, I, I think people privately uh, enjoy when we randomly throw in office swag. I mean, I can tell you the the tone of the email from uh, Mr. Cochran mm. was very positive. So Kentucky. Heads the Knoxville, Tennessee, where I continue to hear not and again, not that Sean and I are the deepest divers, but I would say we're we're certainly uh, at least in the water. And the guy, everyone out on the beach is screaming about Tennessee national championship. And I just sit here like, what are we talking about, guys? Tennessee's laying well, and this is going to be fun. The the prick Dundee number. I don't know if this has been updated. Was ten. Sean, do you think he got it right? I think he's really close. I think it'll be nine and a half, but I think he's close. Nine is the number. I'm seeing nine, nine and a half actually now that nine, that, so, that it's out there. Yeah, um, I see some nine. That, that's nine what I would make it as. All right, we'll go what, nine what, and what a half. I know I'm a yeah. snorkeler. We'll go nine. We'll split the difference. We'll go nine and a half. Uh, that that's how you make a market right there. Uh, creator of markets, Tennessee. I, I get it. They're having a great season. They are a great team. I like them. I even went out. I said publicly that I am. I, I think I have to take a different look at Rick Barnes. Wow. But what I did not Don't say fall for the narrative. Wait till no. Rick Barnes wins well, some uh, games at the turn. Well, again, this is regular season still. Now, can I do, do I have a, a calendar item that says mm. fade Rick Barnes? Yes. That spreads across the two days of the first round. <laughs> uh, sorry. The second round of March madness. Absolutely. So uh, Colby, are we laying, are we laying this number here? It no. seems hard with the way Kentucky's playing right now. Kentucky's been road warriors all year. If you look at what they've done on the road, uh, they've won at the jungle. They won in Starkville. They won at Arkansas. I know, you know, Arkansas is not great. They won at Florida. Um, they've proven that they are legit on the road and they are, you know, athletically right there with Tennessee, if not better. Uh, I would actually lean a little bit better from an athlete standpoint. And um, Tennessee already clinched. Tennessee already clinched the one seed. Against South Carolina, they clinched it. So, and Tennessee beat them the first time at Rupp. No, 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 no. This. <laughs> no, 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 no. This that was a new one. That was a new beat. Yeah. <laughs> it was almost like Colby was doing an impression yeah. of his own. It was a freestyle. Rap. He like it was like a jazz musician taking someone else's music and adding a little pizzazz at the end. Kentucky's gonna win this outright. Yeah. Give give, give, give me the Wildcats and the points. And uh, sprinkle that money line. What is that? What is that? Plus, uh, plus three forty. I'm seeing. Woo wee. Uh, yeah, I'm with you guys. Uh, Kentucky plus nine and a half. Uh, six and three ATS on the road. Uh, play incredible offense. Now they don't play a ton of defense, and Tennessee is good at home. Uh, even as uh, even ATS, they're usually pretty reliable. But to Colby's point, they've already locked it up. Kentucky is in a revenge spot, and Kentucky in conference tournament games. I mean, I'm excited to. Break down the SEC conference tournament because I think they're they match up well in in conference as well. I think they're going to be a fun tournament team, and I think they got a lot going for them. So yeah, give me Kentucky uh, and the points. This feels way too big. Uh, the total in this game is one sixty five and a half. The last time they played, the score was one oh three to ninety two. That's 195 points. That's 30 more points. Uh, is that like that? That feels like the definition of a Courtney Love total. 30. They scored 195 points. You got a 165 point total. 
I'd still I take the over. How it works. Yeah, I know. Yeah. That is yeah. a disgusting act. My, Something stinks. Well, I mean, if you're gonna, if, if Tennessee, like if, whoever wins this game, it's gonna outscore the other team. The irony. See what I did there? That was come on. You stepped all over my sweet maddenism. They're <laughs> they're gonna outscore the other. He's team one of those track. guys who will get penetration. The irony. One of our listeners will eventually, uh, statistically, one day make love to Courtney Love, and mm. they will they will report back to the show that. Hey, actually, not that bad. That's gonna be that's gonna be the big twist in coming years. Well, One of our well, listeners definitely has already made love to Courtney Love. <laughs> all right, uh, what are you talking about? Courtney Love probably yeah. is one of our listeners. Yeah. Let's mean, be honest. She's looking just, for some extra cash. I mean, if there's anyone that uh, epitomizes the DJN only lifestyle, hashtag DJN's only. Might be Courtney Love. Yeah, I mean the the odds. It's like Genghis Khan. The odds are incredibly likely. <laughs> I, I'm also on Kentucky. I mean, I, Patty C has shared some moments of his love life, and when he gets once he gets into in Hollywood, and uh, I can only imagine those two paths crossing one day if they haven't already. Patty Steen. Uh, <laughs> Oh, that's, his, that's his. Let me put my shades on. That's his romance novel <laughs> character. Um, Patty Steam. All right, so Discord with uh, another pick here on first pick. Oh, Tennessee. sorry, no, they're on Creighton. Creighton. They have Creighton laying the short number on the road against Nova, and then they have Tennessee. Then they have rotation number six six two Tennessee. Do that uh, now. Nah, it's pleasing everyone. Baylor heads to Lubbock, Texas. Always a weird uh, road trip out there. Plus, they uh, they got these weird sheds they make you sleep in. Texas Tech mm -hmm. laying, uh, according to the the the, prick, the prickster himself, which once again uh, he's been pretty good today. He's got Baylor catching a point. Actual number, Sean, two. Mm. Not bad. Texas Tech here, um, another. Big 12 road spot, but boy, I, 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 I have a feeling Colby's about to, to promote taking Baylor on the road here. Yes. Um, really uh, even including their uh, national championship uh, appearance in 2019 and Texas tech has dominated this series historically, but not lately, not lately. Baylor has actually won uh, what seven of the last nine. So uh, that includes uh, a what? They're what? Four and one in their last five in Lubbock, even though that's a lit environment. Langston loves a game time decision, doing the Belichick action there for us. He's mm. been game time decision for a couple of weeks. Um, and uh, yeah, Baylor's on another level right now. Texas Tech is playing good ball. It is a, a, a lit environment, but I kind of think Baylor is, is just on another level. I will take Hit the, the double lit bingo square, <laughs> double lit environment. Um, and he's fading it. Baylor is I know storm. Uh, if you win storm, if you win, really, this is yes. storm. Warning? Wait, who, which side, the side you picked or the other side, Baylor's number 11 in the nation. If Texas tech wins you storm, it's the butt bowl. You got to do it. <laughs> Wrong team's favorite, John. They need uh they need to bring back I know you said butt bowl, but they need to bring back the butt bowl. That really would heal help heal the nation. Uh Baylor, very good, as you mentioned, Colby. ATS, 18, 9, and 2 overall uh this season. Yeah, this one's tough, man, because I uh, I and they've been good on the road, ATS, six and two. I, I've struggled to figure out either one of these teams. I feel like every time I pick Baylor. They screw it up, and when I fade them, uh, they cost me. But I think this is the spot once again. And another reason why is Texas Tech's one game back on Baylor too. It's actually a huge game for as far as like the seeding in the Big Twelve tournament. So they beat better team. It. They beat them in their spot too. Kramer, yeah. what are you doing? You taking Baylor as well? Oh, I said wrong team's favored. Yeah. Okay, wrong team is favored. Uh, I love the revenge spot and. Uh, yeah, I think we're going to be dumping some money into Baylor. I think Colby is going to convince us to pretty strongly dump some money into Baylor in the first round of the tourney. So I'm just getting ahead of it. Carolina, Duke, we're heading to Durham, 3:30 p.m. on the West Coast. Unclear if Coach K will come out and ceremoniously uh, <laughs> do the coin toss or coin toss or something. Duke Lane, uh, well, oh, the ultimate move would be if Duke stormed the court here <laughs> and just <laughs> made and Jay Billis is just crying. <laughs> That would be great. And Coach K is there, and he's like trying to stop, and he why, and he dies getting trampled by Duke fans. Why wouldn't? Uh, yeah, I mean, Coach K is.
Coach K is unhappy with all the attention <laughs> Sister Jean gets. He's gonna show up to the game in a wheelchair. Duke, la- Duke, la- he's gonna have a blanket over his legs. Duke laying four. Colby, Colby, Prick Dundee nailed this one. By the way, the, uh, they're, they're, you, you gotta take the home team, right? You gotta take the home team. And and uh, look, they're not gonna storm because uh, although Carolina has what a twenty-seven game all-time lead since. The turn of the century, Duke's got a twelve game lead on beating Carolina. So well, who cares? It doesn't matter if you're favored. I've been told. It doesn't matter if it's mm-hmm. an upset. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If you feel like storming, you oh, storm. I agree. Mm-hmm. I agree, but Duke, trust me, Duke fans, no. Nah. Yeah. We have we I'm sure we have some Duke listeners to the podcast. And I'm I'm telling each and every one of you, take a good hard look in the mirror and let yourself Go, hey, I'm tired of being called a private school pussy. I'm tired of being called soft. I'm tired of the media calling us out. I'm gonna storm this damn court when we beat UNC and we cover the spread. If you don't cover, you can't uh storm. But if you cover that four, storm. Yeah. When you cover that four. Although uh I think those types of people tend to have fun uh when they get on a plane and go to an island that is owned by a dude. <laughs> I think that's where those types of people have fun. I don't think they do it in public. You're so talking about Johnny Depp, right? Uh, Johnny you know, Depp owns yeah. yeah, Pirates of the Caribbean. It's a layover to uh, yeah. Epstein Island. Yeah. Uh, I'm taking Duke. <laughs> I, I, it's a good spot. They're at home. Duke at home. I feel like you just got to take him here, right? Is it is it that simple, Colby? What am I missing? Well, yeah, they lost the first game in Chapel Hill, and I think that's that's got a Shire went, went undefeated against them last year. So Hubert Davis got his revenge here. Would love to get the sweep and Duke's one game back. So absolutely huge game there. But uh, I think the home crowd's all the difference. I will lay it with Duke as well. Duke 11 and six ATS at home. This is, this is one they shine. Yeah. I mean, Shire has to show he's not that bum coach K losing at home to North Carolina. <laughs> Oh man, what a way to go out! I really thought he was gonna. Come that back was one of the year. funniest games. Yeah, I, I mean, just to go out like a little bitch. You, I mean, you gotta be. Oh, remember they had like a press conference set up. They just thought he was gonna win the game, so he had can, to go there we, and like address. Can we put out a, yeah. <laughs> can we put out a graphic since twenty twenty two? Uh, versus North Carolina at home, one of those side by sides. Uh, John Shire one and zero, Coach K zero and one. Yeah, or just like a hundred percent and zero percent. That was oh, one of the yeah. most. See, this is how can you be that smart of an institution like Duke, and have yeah. this post game ceremony on the on the on mid court? They were that confident in they're taking on <laughs> North Carolina, like the like maybe the biggest blue blood in the history same, of college basketball. Same reason that you didn't think anything would come of you getting on a plane and going to this weird pleasure island. So, again, same <laughs> logic. Same logic. You didn't. You, you didn't see the the, the person. Stephen there. Hawking will be there. Oh wow! I mean, him and Sister Jean are uh, going to have a race. <laughs> allegedly, allegedly. Uh, <laughs> plus the new coach K. Well, and also Eddie Griffin will not be there. He made that very clear when I accidentally yeah, called that, him Chris Tucker. That was allegedly Chris Tucker. All right, UConn uh, heading to Providence, Rhode Island. Uh, the dunk, even after clinching and, and uh, having a little bit of celebration, not slowing down UConn a bit. 5 p.m. on the West Coast here. Providence, um, the originator himself, came out with a number of nine. It's actually 10. Uh, so we're going to get an extra point here to take our guys at the dunk against a team that I don't know how much. How much it really? Uh, I assume it means absolutely nothing, Colby. Well, I mean, I guess maybe for the overall one seed in the tournament, it could mean something. Yeah, okay. Could it? Yeah, because Houston, no, no, not, if Houston not beats the big, Kansas, not yeah. the okay. Big East tournament, like overall, overall. Yeah. Which, yeah. What really? I, I I was I was reading about this a little bit. It almost doesn't like Houston and UConn are so uniquely ge- like the geographic location of the teams makes it so. Just like when the Carolina teams, they're not the overall number one. They still manage to get an absolutely great path in terms of like where their crowd's going to be. It sounds like it might not matter a ton for for both these teams based on where the locations could be. So, yeah, I want. I mean, at some point, you got to take your foot off the gas a little bit, right? Well, we had yeah. reports of Hurley uh, going out, hanging out, uh, hitting up some. He went to like the local uh, bar, was drinking. Oh, it's got to be so annoying. He's got to be so annoying. <laughs> Do you think he's a good beer pong no. partner, Dan no. Hurley? Yeah, no. I, 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 man, I really want to take Providence here because I feel like UConn's dumped the Gatorade. Yeah, 
They don't need this. Yeah. They're on the road. That's the only time they've been susceptible. But on the other hand, am I being cute by picking against UConn? L- let me give you that nudge. All right. Providence is five and one in Providence in their last yeah. six against UConn, with that one yeah. loss being in overtime by three. So Providence, Providence, you you win this game, you're in the NCAA tournament. There's no way you're not going. So to me, they might not win it, but that number is large. And like I said, they just came off of the uh it's a back to back road. They just won at Marquette. I'm all over the Friars and the points here. I mean, we we said we had the same handicap last week about the dunk, people waiting outside, Saturday morning pictures. It, it always seems to be that way. And when I see the start time of this game is uh, 5 p.m. Pacific time. Oh my time, God. I, that oh is my. a lot of time. <laughs> are you a- kidding me? These people are savages. They, I, have you been to Rhode Island? They eat pizza, they eat cold pizza. Now that now that the uh, United Football League is back, can we get a Providence beer snake? Uh, good folks of Providence, I know Cousin Mush probably going to be there in attendance. Probably. Cousin Mush, we will buy you six beers to get a beer snake started. <laughs> yeah, definitely. You think Cousin Mush? Can, what do you think Cousin Cousin Mush is? Uh, what kind of state is that after six beers? Oh, uh, jolly. Yeah. No, he's ready he's, for the snake. <laughs> All right, bro. I mean, well, g- insanely optimistic about his bets. This is. The- I still laugh every time when we were the last time we hung out with cousin Mush. He was talking about how yeah he might want to book the flights to come back to, <laughs> you know, watch sweat out the end of the Circus Survivor yeah, we where he's gonna win millions of dollars. And there was no like, no like worried about jinxing it. It was week That's, eight or nine. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's just so great. He's such a mush, oh. even when. Like even he's a he's self aware that he's a mush, but then yeah. still stumbles into extremely mush like tendencies. Well, it's like the excitement in the first half out in in uh, maybe at the Westgate oh, uh, for NFL, and then by, by halftime he's already cursing the bet. <laughs> so yeah, it's a lot of a lot of it's like the horse of Radford. They were looking great in the first half, no, and then just... high variance. We got to remember horse of Radford in the first half. Yes, uh, of course I'm on Providence here, just like you. I. I mean, but you know, same kind of thing. We have double edged, like, well, but wait, because last Saturday Villanova came into Providence, took care of business. Yeah. And, but wait, UConn after that celebration is still like, whatever uh, we'll take care of business. Cause we're just that much better than everyone. Doesn't matter. I will. Uh, I'll look that blade right in the eyes, both eyes, which by the way, uh, for those wondering, I will be revealing once college basketball is done, I will reveal the K metric results. I, I've just about wrapped that up. On who? Everyone. Oh, okay. Yeah, I got I got K. Well, I got some I we had reports of uh oh. people wanting you to do the K metric on future Giants quarterback Russell Wilson. I'd have to go through my database of, okay. of K metric uh reports from the past. I don't think <laughs> has K- it shifted at all. I for- mean, as weird as Russ is, he did not uh, he did not show up on the K metric scale. Like, like uh, some, some of the, the most famous Josh ones. Allen was bad for the K metric. Wasn't he high on them? What are the big, are we sure <laughs> about Josh Allen without Brian Dable? Uh, that's true. Yeah. I'm just, you know, uh, his were too close together. Justin Fields, of course, famously one of the most separated eyes that the K metric has ever me- measured. And if you don't know, the K metric is the measurement between the pupil. Uh, I found that it is directly correlated to quarterback success. Um, so it, uh, measured with, of course, standard deviations from the mean uh, or from the middle. Uh, UNLV, last one. Colby knows how to build the card because we always finish with the Mountain West. UNLV heads to Reno, Nevada to take on Nevada. The Fighting Steve Alfords are just, I, I'm done. I'm done going against them. But wait, I can't bet against UNLV. Nevada laying uh, six and a half. I didn't actually. Uh, it's actually six. So nice again. Prick Dundee on his game. He's in conference tournament form. Nevada laying six. The, the fighting Alfor, Alfred's seven thirty here on the West Coast. I don't know if I can go against this team, but they win close games. The running Rebs are running incredibly hot. They're ten and one. Yeah. How you don't walk away from the hot table? I tried to tell you guys that last time when they played San Diego State. They're ten and one. In their last eleven games, their only loss at home against Nevada. This is revenge. This is the Rebs going up to Reno and putting it in Steve Alford's pipe and making him smoke it. Love the Rebs here. You say nine and one over their last ten. Ten and one over their last eleven. Okay. Yeah, I mean, 
the Nevada, Nevada, the Wolfpack are nine and one over the last ten. I, it's, they're both playing. <laughs> Should good be a ball. great game, but I, I feel like you gotta take the points. But again, I'm with you, Kramer. I feel like I've lost a lot of money this season betting against Steve Alford. Uh, and and what UNLV has won the last two in Reno. To, to add on to your point, Sean, but uh, no, this this Nevada team is the real deal, I think. And UNLV on the road, although they've had some nice road wins. A little more questionable than than and Nevada's Jared Lucas was on that Elite Eight Oregon State team. They they are very experienced. I I can't believe I have to say this about Steve Halford, but I, I, I'm buying gross. in. I'm buying in. I think uh, Nevada can uh, can really be a thorn in in a lot of teams' side going into March. Um, they're they're better than UNLV in my opinion. Um, now to be fair. Nevada probably should have lost that game in Vegas. I was on Nevada. They got it done. UNLV played better the entire game and gave it away down the stretch, but that's what veteran teams do. And that is why Nevada takes down UNLV wow. by double digits. Wow. Let's go. Oh I, that was what I needed. Cause I, I think I'm in the same boat. I was a little worried about the number, but if Colby's not worried about the number, I'm not worried about the number. I'm not worried about the number because I'm taking UNLV, baby. Really? Yeah. Well, if New Mexico wins at uh Utah State, which there's a chance there, New Mexico's got some nice road wins this year. Uh then if Nevada wins, they win the Mountain West uh championship. So they're playing for everything here. Yeah. I anytime Colby's on Nevada, you gotta fade oh, him. Really? It's the, it's the reverse <laughs> it, Colby. Hey, St- yeah, that is true. Steve Alford, historic. Not not the last time they played though. I took Nevada and I, I escaped with a it's win true. against UNLV. But you know, over the course of Steve Alford's life, he has fucked up my life a, a good amount. When Colby believes in Steve Alford, that's when you run. Give me the Rebs <laughs> plus six. It's like a blumpkin. Uh, you know what else Colby <laughs> believes in? Underdog fantasy. Uh, love firing on these underdog fantasy. College basketball pickums. Oh yes, uh, you can win up to 100x if you go crazy with some of these spicy plays. But again, I mean, come on, conference tournament time. Add a little spice in your life. Promo code SGPN. Get a hundred percent deposit match up to one hundred dollars, and uh, the deposit match is great. It's not some crazy rollover that you got to play a million times. Uh, just play it once, you're good to go. We have one uh, loaded up in the hopper already. Lower on Tyson DJ and Hart, sixteen and a half points. And uh, Dawson higher, Garcia, Dawson Garcia, fifteen and a half points. Let's fire another one, uh, Colby. Either later tonight uh, or maybe I, early Saturday. What do we? What do we? I got? don't know if you saw the graphic, but uh, it must have been updated. It was Filipowski and DJ Horny. So <laughs> <laughs> no more DJ Horny. <laughs> Like we couldn't um, get it. We, we couldn't get it up for DJ Horny. Horny down. We, Horny down. Now we are all on Duke, but uh, we've had good luck with Filipowski. PRA lower twenty seven and a half. Colby, what higher or lower underdog entry do you like? I am. It's waiting on my location right now. But um, oh, no, no, uh, no, no. load up the. Uh, no, we got lots of Saturday games. What what game you want? Me do to they have Duke here? Carolina? Yes, oh, of course they do. They know what's up. Um, what is what is uh, Baycott rebounds? Yeah, what is that? Nine and a half. He's one hundred percent getting ten rebounds. It's yes, it's right. Yes. Like this is he's yes. he has no more eligibility. This is finally his. This, yes. this is his last year of playing ball. I like the rebounds. Armando Baycott higher nine and a half rebounds. And right, what's the I'm currently looking at. Uh, I, I'm I'm there now. Uh, There's so many games already. I know oh, this is this is deep. Um, this is delightful. Mm. You know, I I always love the ace miss higher, but hang on, let me see if I can find something else. Um, Seventeen and a half would be that against Oklahoma, but uh, let's I mean, go. What were you gonna say? No, I, I was gonna say they do have Nevada. Who, oh, who I got. It. P- Go ahead. Isaiah Stevens is a stud, higher than fifteen and a half points against Air Force. Air Force can't guard Isaiah oh, Stevens. Wait, now we're doing yeah. a double higher. Oh, yeah, no. we're Colby. doing a double higher. He's gonna again. score thirty. All right, then get. Let's get rid of Baycott rebounds. Then. I mean. Uh, all right, all right, Colby. You want to lower? Steven, du- you double w- higher. 
You, if you no, want a going, lower, let me find you a lower then. Okay. We know we're going three legs. We're doing, we're doing three? Isaiah Stevens higher. Armando Baycott rebounds higher. And then okay. what's the, what's the lower uh, trying let's, a new formation here. Let's take the lower on Joe Girard, the oh, former yes. Syracuse guard, yes. uh, 15 and a half points as they head the wake or, or you could do the 20 and a half P PRA. What do you like? Better? No, let's do points. We don't want to accidentally okay. get hurt by a bunch of assists. All right, so Armando Baycott higher, Isaiah Stevens higher, Joseph Gerard the third lower. That pays out plus six hundred over an. You can play his fantasy. Benedict music, Sean, for leaving your Syracuse team high and dry. Uh, Gerard and uh, Stevens are points, and uh, Baycott rebounds. Ooh, a little <laughs> six xer. Underdogfantasy.com promo code SGPN. Nice work, Sean. Thank you. Feels like this new formation could help us win. Going a little, going with three. Putting the two the two uh, hires the one lower. All right, let's move along. We have conferences to break down. First up, the American East, uh, a tiny conference starting a little bit later here. Uh, you know, most most people know this conference for Vermont. They they tend to do well here. Uh, they've had some nice showings in March as well. We've had some nice nights betting on UMass Lowell as well. Looking at the conference future odds, UMBC the seven seed is actually the long slot, the long shot here at 100 to one. Albany the eight seed, along with Binghamton the five seed are 50 to one. Maine, one of Colby's favorite FCS programs, the six seed, the Black Bears, or the Cocaine Bears. I always forget. Along with New Hampshire, the four seed, they're 40 to one. Then we get a big teardrop. Down to Bryant, the three seed, ten to one. UMass Lowell, as I mentioned, a team we've won some money on this year. The two seed, plus four ten, and the favorite, as they often are, the Catamounts of Vermont, the one seed, minus two seventy. And Sean, boy, is there nothing I like better than a juicy favorite atop the board? I assume that's what we're doing here, Colby, right? No, oh, one hundred percent. It's on campus. Yeah. No one's. They went undefeated in conference again in the regular season. They're only lost. In, in the whole season was when Colgate, who's a fact, Colgate is the, the, the is Vermont of the Patriot League, uh, yep. pulled the upset at Vermont. Um, this is this is as easy as it gets. There's not even and a threat, really. Yeah, they reseed after each round. Um, I guess they would only need to reseed once, but they reseed for the semifinals. So no matter what Vermont would get the lowest seed that would advance. So, I mean, your only threat is Lowell, but Lowell, you know, yeah. Vermont, Vermont has handled Lowell. They just swept them. So <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. All right. So we're just minus two seventy. Not so fast ladies. Uh, give me UMBC hundred to one only lost by four to UMass Lau. Very quick, high powered offense. <laughs> You gonna buy? You gonna oh, buy no. a Lyle? Oh no! Yeah. We're, they're gonna we're gonna get <laughs> no it. We're UMBC. Gonna, we're gonna get hundred to one. <laughs> what did I say? You said UMass Lowell. Lowell. Yeah, I'm, I'm just saying people get upset when you do things like this. And Colby was just trying. I to was very excited. Control. I was focused on my UMBC one hundred to one. Oh, you do like the Terriers. Hey, the, retrie then, the retrievers are playing better second half of the season. And Maine forty to one. Maine can, can, Maine's defense. They can compete with anyone in this conference. Uh, single digit losses both times to Vermont. So I, I don't think they are completely out of it. Again, if you want to lay minus 270, sure, fine. But if you want to have some fun, I think sprinkle on Maine and UMBC. Do you have anything to add to that, Colby? Worth noting, if I look at the all all American East Conference on Ken Palm, I don't see a player from Vermont. Their team. But, they play like yeah. a team. Um, by the way, we just cashed Northern Iowa against Belmont for oh, any of us fuck. that took Northern Iowa. There we go. Needed that one. Um I like, I like the we there. Oh, were you, did you ride Belmont, Kramer? No, no, no. I just I like how you used I was the great use of the of, of the we. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean so I, I, yes, I'm I was on Belmont, so I didn't appreciate I was on Belmont. specifically. Mm. Uh your you, mistake. Kobe, does, Kobe likes the purple teams. Your mistake. Um, uh, yeah. So, uh, all right. So, Col Sean is. So, final answer, Sean. You're taking a forty to one and a hundred to one in the American East. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to lay two seventy for some 
pussy ass cat amounts, some stapler, some syrup drinking staplers. Maybe you missed it, but the, 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 the games are on campus Yeah, and it is reseeded after the first round. Yeah. Okay. I, you heard me and shout out to cousin mush in the chat saying uh, he just caught up and he said he's in for the beer snake. So all right. Uh, just to let you know, buddy, um, what Vermont just kind of, I don't know if you know this, but since like 2017, they've pretty much won it in the conference every year, except I think the year UNBC went to the, and, and knocked off Virginia. So you're going up against uh kind of, uh, how do I say this? You're going minus, up against so, minus that? 160 so last year. It's 100 to what? They were minus 160 last year, cashed. Yes. Minus 270 this year. We were talking about this. Before. How about the year they lost? You have uh, the year I, UMBC I, won. I, what were they? UMBC playing? was really good that year. Wasn't looking at that data, yeah. but I can pull it up. Um, I'm with Colby. Let's Enjoy look, your minus let's 270, talk about ladies. The first round. The first <laughs> round is being played uh, on Friday. Again, all at campus sites. The, the the first game is tipping off at 11 a.m. They're they're playing all the games at the same time for some silly reason. We're heading to Smithfield, Rhode Island, where Maine Sean's Black Bears, the six seed, they're taking on Bryant. Bryant is laying six and a half here at home. I assume Sean is on Maine here. Colby, 100%. where are you at? Where are you at? Uh, yeah, for this game, I, uh, I actually think you got Bryant is way more talented, but they've been just a fucking train wreck all year, man. You got, Ooh. I think you got to take the points just cause Bryant has been, you know, they got the cocaine, they got the eight ball and the, in and the, and the, and the, you know, you got the, you got the f- having sex with students, which, you know, any Wait, which, great basketball which, coach should do. Um, but this is uh, Maine or Bryant, Bryant. Oh, <laughs> they have I, film- okay. They Prime fired their coach, and, and so they fired their coach. But uh, it's now Phil Martelli Jr., the head coach there. I mean, Bryant is way more talented than Maine, but they've been too inconsistent. They've just been kind of a train wreck all year. Uh, for for like consistency, they have not been able to put it together. I'll take a shot on Maine and the points. Uh, I, and this was a prick Dundee or opener. It's actually I and I. It's not. You have to kind of go deep into the extra tabs here, but uh, minus four. Is the actual oh, okay. number? Oh no, 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 no! That's all the difference for me. Give me Bryant plus <laughs> or minus four. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Bryant's gonna win switch. the game. Little, little three card Monty. Well, find the ball, motherfucker. Yeah, Bryant's gonna win the game. Yeah, Come Bryant, on, I like nah. Maine Bears roll. Bears, uh, best team in the American East at ATS. Again, you guys think I'm fucking around? This Maine team. Don't let the Bears get hot. Uh, yeah, big fan of Phil Martelli. Um, minus four, Brian. May a main coming in four and one. Yeah, Maine's a good squad. I I I appreciate you giving them a shout. They're gonna lose this one though, unfortunately. Uh, rest in peace to your future. Hopefully not, but probably. All right, we next one we got the one seed. We're heading to Burlington, Vermont. Uh, do they still have the big coat factory up there? <laughs> Albany, the eight. C- I mean, if you listen to radio in the nineties, you know about Burlington Coat Factory. Maybe it doesn't even exist anymore. Albany, no, I saw eight- one somewhere. Where the hell was uh, it? Really, they still exist. It, it's I like think. A, I think uh, last time I drove to Vegas, and uh, you know that that area where yeah. all the outlets are in California. Yeah. I think there's one there <laughs> in the middle of the desert near the border. Yeah. They just like in Barstow. They're just like, hey, you know what? We're gonna the the train comes through here. We're gonna build an outlet mall, and then uh, the the tour bus is on the way to Vegas. That bus people to go gamble. They stop there to do a couple hours of shopping. <laughs> Albany, um, shout out to the F the Albany football program and Puffenberger. He was a fun follow this year. Uh, the eight seed here though, and uh, they're taking on Vermont. Who again? They're minus two seventy to win the entire conference. Uh, Torney. They're minus 15 and a half here. Massive number. So you, let's just let's just lean on history. Last year in a very similar situation, they were taking on NJIT. They were laying 16 and they covered. No sweat. I'm obviously on the favorite here. I'll let you guys uh pussyfoot around why you're gonna take the points. Vermont only five and seven ATS at home. <clears throat> they did Something beat Albany about. by twenty two though. Uh, at, in Burlington, but I, I'll take the points. I think Albany can stay within that game. The Albany's Vermont wins at, by twelve. This is the classic lay the points in the conference tournaments conference. 
I don't know. You're right. Actually, they've only won two of the last eight or two of the last 10. Yeah. I'm, um, I'm taking Vermont. What is it? 15? Yeah. 15, 14 and a half or 15, 15 and a half. And okay. All right. Yeah. It's yeah. A lot, lay it, lay it, lay it. Vermont's uh, going to come crashing down, but not in this game. Crash, crash down. All right. UMBC, the retrievers, the seven seed, they're heading to Durham, oh. North, uh, New Hampshire. Wait. To take up. Uh, this no, is did I mess this up. Yeah, my bad. Uh, Lowell, Massachusetts. I was going to say, uh, UMass Lowell is not in Lowell. L- <laughs> Lowell. It's not Louisville. It's Lowell. Uh, UMass Lowell, the two seed. Uh, honestly, we had this on uh, God's Eye for a bit. This is a good, this is a good squad. Uh, you know, Vermont, Vermont's very good. UMass Lowell, uh, very, very deserving of the second odds in the conference. Laying 10 here against Sean's retrievers. <laughs> Sean, by it's a terrier's panting. They're gonna be running up and down the court, dunking on you, motherfuckers. I don't. Do they have anyone that can dunk, Colby? Dog. On uh, no, which team? Low? Uh, yeah. UMBC. No, UMBC. No, not Who really. Says um, Who says yeah. a dog? Who says a dog can't play basketball? They're gonna be carrying around that guy in the dog costume through the uh, sportsbook. Four and two straight up their last six games. Kept it within four at low the first time. Lost by four. Um, yeah, I kind of think you. Goal. That's what I'm saying. I, I actually think like UMBC has been playing a lot better the second half of the season. Outright. Uh, I'll take a shot on the on on the retrievers and the points here. Um, yeah, I just feel like they've been playing a lot a lot better the second half of the season. So, uh, let's go. Give me give me them. I think they can keep this within ten. Lowell will probably win the game, but. Blow by seven. Give me UMBC in the points. I think they're a live dog, as I mentioned in the futures uh, futures market. Oh, Lowell, Lowell always plays with their food in the mid against the shitty the shittier teams. Like throughout the season, like they'll win by like four against really bad teams, and then they'll show up and beat a couple good teams. But I feel like they it's a common trait of theirs is to just play down system play. I mean. Uh, even just from a matchup perspective, the strength of the UMBC defense is is defending the three point line. I, it's not not a great matchup. Lay the points, system play. Uh, good luck, Sean. I'm. I, it will be. Maybe we'll have to pour one out um, around two p.m. two thirty p.m. Uh, local time when uh, when your American East futures have all been cooked. <laughs> you see all this negativity <laughs> he's throwing out there, uh, Colby. I, I, this is I, an easy you, conference every you... year. Vermont wins. Yeah, and every year I dare to dream. I mean, listen. <laughs> if you play a hundred to one shot sixty years in a row and it hits one oh. fucking time, that is plus EV, motherfucker. Yeah, no, I get it. That's I. Uh, we're we're. Do I on, need to explain gambling. We're on the same. I'm gonna play a hundred to one American East every year from now until I die. All I need is one of those to hit. I'll be up. Unless uh, I unless I live unless I live more than a hundred years. And then even then, I won't care if I lost a little money betting on the American East. Vermont easy was, formula, Colby. You do the math. Vermont does the was, math check get out. Those stem, get, get those stem cell injections, buddy. Uh, I won't need them. I'll 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 cash this and I'll probably cash this this year, and then I won't need to live anymore. <laughs> UMBC beating UVA was twenty twenty two, right? No, t- two thousand eighteen. Oh, all right. I yeah. don't have that data. Never mind. I was gonna give. I was gonna give Sean a bone. Um, since he's only capturing the negative energy, there's lots of dark, dark matter in this room, 12 PM on the West coast, Durham. Now we're going to Durham, New Hampshire, where Binghamton, the five seed, New Hampshire, the four seed, New Hampshire Lang. Let's see here. Two and a half. Uh, This is actually, this is, this would be the game where I would say, maybe you don't have a system play. In terms of uh, just just bite off the chalk, that that's that's where the position always starts. Colby, oh, I'm jumping on Binghamton, the golf course. All right, uh, sand trap for uh, no, the the Wildcats of New Hampshire here. Um, look, they've won five of six in New Hampshire. <laughs> what language lost are you speaking? Four, four straight. <laughs> uh, New Hampshire's lost four straight. Uh, they were fading down the stretch. Binghamton, they split they split in the regular season, but Bing, Binghamton's playing much much better ball. Uh, in my opinion, uh, you know, just in general, the, the past month of the season. But they, but they beat uh, New. Ha- oh wait, sorry, uh, you're right. Binghamton beat them by 13 yeah. in Binghamton. Yeah. yeah, they split, and uh, 
Ch- uh, what's his name? Cheerney, the the guard for Binghamton's a fucking stud. He can create his own shot, um, which is rare. When you get to American East games, you find someone to create their own shot. You celebrate that. Um, give me, Bi- give me Binghamton, and and uh, they they get that they get the outright win. Hmm. The Binghamton Bearcats. I still don't really get what a bear cat is. Uh, they're all these cats. It's a wild cat. It's a bear cat. Wow. Get, the, get the cocaine. Bear. It's a hybrid. I mean, New, Ham- New Hampshire hits their free throws, but to Colby's point, uh, I like taking a team coming in hot. Uh, give me Binghamton plus two and a half. Oh yeah, this is an easy one. Also, just the way it's a bad matchup. I mean, they needed overtime at home to take care. A Binghamton uh, back in whenever that was. I, I think that regardless, this is going to be a close team, close game. So yeah, like I was saying earlier, I think you take the points in this one because I'm not so sure there's a cliff between these guys, and they do have black bears uh, confirmed up in New Hampshire. So hopefully the coke and, and they are hippies. So I herbal cocaine, I guess organic, artisanal, artisanal cocaine. Hey, maybe you want to see the Maine Bears in action for the American East tournament. You can t- get tickets over on Game Time. In fact, you can get tickets for almost anything music, sports, concerts, comedy, whatever it is, Game Time has you covered. And when you use the promo code SGPN, you get $20 off. Just head to GameTime.co, your go to app for last minute tickets. You get the lower prices, less fees, the Game Time guarantee, meaning you're going to get your tickets on time and authentic, guaranteed. It's made for mobile, very easy to use. Uh, just download the Game Time app, get started today. Use a promo code SGPN and get twenty dollars off. Game time. All right, here we are. Let's see. We're moving along to the other tournament that starts on Saturday, March 9th. The Big Sky. Uh, it's another one. We uh, we we love this conference. Come FCS season. Some of our favorite favorite FCS programs uh, in here. Interesting odds. Another one of these. Hey, let's uh, let's not overthink it. We want our best teams to get in, so we're just gonna stack buys on buys on buys. You essentially have a single buy system, but they stagger rest. And mm. actually, I take back what I said. That that's my comment for the next conference we're gonna do. They actually that's the opposite. They stagger rest in the uh, Big Sky in a way where they don't even give the top seeds. An advantage, really. Um, they they have an advantage in the first round because the the other teams are playing playing games the day before. But then they have a, a full day in between, um, and I guess they have well, a day rest. But the other teams also come in play later. Well, re- I don't know. No, so the four and five seed play on Monday, and then Eastern Washington. Oh, they. I'm looking at I, this bracket. I'm looking at is stupid. So yeah, you gotta you gotta show the part where it has the days as well because so I'm I'm not using the one I linked to in the sheet. I'm an idiot. Eastern Washington plays the winner of Vandals Portland State. Now that game is gonna be on Sunday. Now assuming Eastern Washington wins, they wouldn't have to play again until Tuesday. Meanwhile, the four and five seed are gonna be playing on one day rest, and then the similar uh, side stuff happens, but for the three seed and six seed. All right, so we're back to them liking their top seeds. Yes, got it. They're going out of their way to spoil the top seeds uh, with some rest advantage. No reseeding, and all of the games are being played in the. Um, and now it's not. Here we go. The Idaho Central Arena in beautiful Boise, Idaho. Is this someone's home arena, Colby? Boise State, I think. Right. Okay. I don't know that. I, I I can look that up. So I, I uh, thought it was like a, a couple of years ago. I don't know about now, but I think it is. Also worth noting, a fa- fairly uh, geographical center place to play. Um, maybe you know, t- team like Arizona, a little further away, but n- not a big deal. All right, odds again. The the teams at the bottom essentially have an extra game to play. That's why the odds are so long. Sacramento state, the 10 seed 200 to one. They don't have a chance in hell. Um, they're taking wow. on Northern Arizona, the seven seed in the uh, first round. I believe I could be wrong there. And North, anyway, Northern Arizona, the seven seed one fifty to one Idaho, the nine seed beautiful Moscow, um, the, lo- the location of my chickpea burger, 110 <laughs> to one Idaho state. The eight seed, they're thirty to one. Interesting because they play in that playing round. Montana State, 
20 to one along with Portland State at the six seed, Northern Colorado, the two seed, all the way down at 650. Uh, Weber State, the four seed, three to one. Montana, the three seed, plus 270. And Eastern Washington, the one seed, uh, who won, uh, obviously won the regular season uh, crown, but won us some money along the way, plus 175. Uh, certainly you could, you know, you can see with the way the, the odds have these nice tiers that there, there certainly uh, is this contender tier. And then kind of everyone else Are uh, you dipping down the board in the big sky, Colby, who, by the way, yeah. one, one bid they're getting this year, only one. Yeah. And I, I just feel like Eastern Washington's in the harder side with Weber state there. Weber state won at Eastern Washington this year. Uh, and even Montana state just pushed Eastern Washington to overtime uh, yep. not long ago. So I'm going to take the South side of that bracket. Give me Montana, the three seed. I think Montana has got the best path, Northern Colorado. Uh, you know, they can, I think they could beat Northern Colorado and they'll be able to handle Portland state and who knows Northern Colorado might not even get by NAU or, or Idaho state. So uh, I like the Grizz easier path. And then all they got to do is win the championship game, which, you know, whoever they're playing, whether it's E-Dub, whether it's Montana state or Weber, I feel like that's a close game <clears throat> and your, and your value is much better. Your path is just much better. So, load up on the Grizz. I uh, I like some of the longer shots. Give me No Co. Uh, Northern Colorado. Ooh. They only lost by three to Eastern Washington. Coming in uh, relatively pretty hot second half of the season. Fifteen and six last twenty one games. Third in offense in the conference. Second in effective field goal percentage. I think their offense is going to keep them in some games and uh, playing some tough ball. I like the physicality I've seen out of them. Uh, past couple games I've watched. Montana State is the other one I like. Just beat Weber State. Uh, number two defense in the conference. Lost to East Washington by four in overtime. Again, so they can hang with the big dogs. I think you're getting uh, Montana State at 20 to 1 and Northern Colorado plus 650. Uh, those are both pretty fun. So I'm, I'm going to take a small sprinkle on each. It's the uh, home arena of the Idaho Steelheads of the ECHL, which is a minor league hockey uh, program. Also, the uh, Boise Stallions uh, of the Indoor Professional Football League back in 2020. Uh, this is not the. It does not appear to be the Boise State uh, Arena. Interesting. Yeah. So uh, yeah, it looks like they do some rodeo here. Um, all sorts of fun activities going on in Idaho. I. I Th- this I would say more than most of these conferences, you you can t- definitely talk yourself into to going down the board, and and this may be sh- Did anyone say anything positive about Weber State? I didn't know. They're red hot to end the season, but I said they won at Eastern Washington. That's why that's that's concerning. But I, I if you're Weber State though, they just lost to Montana State. They got to play Montana State. They lost to Montana Is State that- in the past week. You view you view that as a good thing or a bad thing? Well, they were playing for the two seed, so you can't say that they were not playing for something. Um, I I think that's a tough draw because Montana State is is solid. So uh, no, I mean I think Weber, I think the best two teams. I don't know uh, Montana, Eastern Washington, and Weber. I think are the best three teams. Eastern Washington yeah. probably the, the 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 overall best team, but they're not. They don't have that home advantage there. Um, I don't know. I feel like the Weavers in a tougher bracket, tough, tougher part of the bracket to me. I feel like whoever comes out of the Weaver Eastern Washington game is the winner of this conference. Uh, so I, you know what? I'll just to diversify. So Sean doesn't say I take all the chalk. Give me a we a uh, little piece of Weaver state here. What? What do you mean? Plus three uh, Ryan. They're, they're, they're a dog. Yeah. It's like a seven point dog on Sunday, maybe eight, eight point seven and a half. Uh, All right. So we got, um, we may have, it looks like we have a lot of games on the board. We're actually only going to do the first two because the rest are in the future. Uh, Saturday, 4 30 PM on the West coast, Sacramento state, Idaho. Is that what I got? Yeah. Okay. The 10 seed, the nine seed again, they, they kind of stack this up for their one seed. They don't just make it fair here. They take the two worst teams, have them go against each other. And you know, Based on the theory we kind of established earlier uh, on episodes, maybe you take the points here. Oh wait, it's a pick 'em. <laughs> so pretty much at a loss here. Uh, I don't know. I mean, yeah, I, 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 I guess I would maybe take Idaho, but uh, 
I they'll mean, have the home the edge, right? The, and the future odds would suggest that there, you know, someone knows something. Why is uh, Idaho's half the price of Sacramento State, and they have a pick'em <laughs> price here? Well, I mean, maybe the fact <laughs> they've lost three straight. I don't know. Idaho's won eleven games, two of which came against but, Sacramento State. But, I, I'm gonna say that's third, domination, right? Third time's a charm. Give me Idaho. What? No. Third time third. they've they've already won. They're two and up. Yeah, you're saying Sacramento. <laughs> third State? time a charm would be Sac Sac State. Uh, no, I'm saying like the third time they're gonna play them, they're also gonna win. Okay, so, so the third time's also gonna be the charm. Yeah. <laughs> third time keeps the charm streak alive. It's not as catchy <laughs> as what you guys are thinking, but uh, Sacramento State's gonna third be third time is a charm, not the charm. There. Sacramento State's gonna be due next time. Yes. Idaho State, the eight seed, uh, taking on Northern Arizona, the seven seed. What are you guys doing? Oh, uh, we're both on Idaho. I, yeah. th I think the home. Yeah. Ed, I think whatever type of home edge potentially. If you're a bat, you think Sacramento State's fans are traveling in numbers to go up to Boise? I don't think so. So yeah, I'll take the the home team here. Uh, yeah, and Idaho State's in a similar situation. They're taking on Northern Colby, Arizona. What a uh, what tournament is called Starch Madness? Starch Madness? Yes. Uh Summit, maybe? I'm I don't trying know. to because I saw someone rocking a Starch <laughs> Madness uh t shirt. I see uh Starch Madness 2023 bracket, rice and grains. It looks like uh, a website called Serious Eats did a <laughs> did a food bracket. Maybe it was just some uh team uh was using it as a nickname. I'll I'll dig uh, deeper. But someone are you sure I this, saw rock in a starch madness t shirt. This looks like a pretty serious thing, the serious eats. It looks like a lot of people get behind this starch madness idea. Hmm. Food networks doing starch madness. It could it could be a whole unrelated thing to <laughs> March Madness. <laughs> That's a cooking thing that that got the guy was just some sort of sh aspiring chef or something. All right, Idaho, Idaho State, Northern Arizona. I uh, was pulling up the number. We got a uh, Idaho State laying four here. Probably makes sense, I guess. Right, another home court situation. Northern Arizona certainly has the longest to travel, and we're at the bottom of a not so good conference. So, so typically you got to assume the uh, the Lumberjacks of Flagstaff, which we like Flagstaff as a city. Great town. One of our favorite uh, towns in Arizona. I, I don't know if I'm, I like them in this spot. They lost to Idaho State at home back on February third. They did just beat them in double overtime on the road, but I feel like if anything, that the the late season uh, lucky win might might result in a little revenge. And then yeah, so, if, so wait, if you want to look at a a win probability curve. The Northern Arizona Idaho State game was absolutely insane. Uh, Idaho State basically had the game, uh, and then they didn't, and then they had the game again, and then didn't, and then they didn't. So uh, yeah, but it, but uh, Northern Arizona is the seven seed. Wouldn't this be played at Northern Arizona then? No, no, it's all, it's, everything's in Boise. Okay, everything's in Boise. Oh yeah, so when I said home or Idaho, nor Idaho State That's actually play in Boise in okay. this arena. Nor does Boise State, is what we learned. So Idaho State kind of has yeah. A We're giving them a lukewarm home spot here. Okay, <laughs> I'll adjust my power rankings. Not lit, but lukewarm. This is like after you get the. I was making some rice last night, so after you get the rice going, you turn it down really low. That's 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 what we're talking about. Rice is about hard here. to make. Uh, you know you. Got, got an Asian lady in the house. You better get it right. Wait, <laughs> why is rice so hard to make? What are you talking about? I don't know. You tell me. Why do I always fuck up rice? Colby, they, they say they make it seem so easy. Colby, you're being racist right now. <laughs> no, I boil water, you dump it in, but it always comes out shitty. Look at I this white it. guy saying it's not hard. I to have make I rice. have no problem making rice. Um, but clip this, uh, clip look this, at this guy. Clip this with the quote: <laughs> "White guy says rice not hard to make." Uh, all right, uh, so we're good, right? We all agree. Yeah. The Bengals, uh, Sean loves the band, and uh, yeah, walk they like rock. an Egyptian. Give me, give me Braden Parker and uh, the Bengals to get it done. Uh, and so, for those who say, "Hey, you always do these great uh, geography lessons when we're talking about these conference championships," uh, the the TLDR of this one is Northern Arizona, very far away from Idaho. That that's something we know. Although they are used to the altitude. We got to start using your, your altitude angle for Northern Arizona home game, Sean. Eight thousand feet up there, Flagstaff. People don't. Oh, know. it is tough. People don't know. So wait, Idaho State's laying four. Yeah, we're taking Idaho State. 
Okay. Yeah. Because we no, also I'm, found out there are much longer road trip to get up the up to Idaho. Yeah, this is a tough spot for Northern Arizona. I'm with you, Idaho State. Lock it up. And uh, if you want to track the Big Sky tourney, continues on through Sunday. So they do play on the Lord's Day. Uh, if, if you if you wanted to know. All right. What what is the uh, Idaho team that's the Vandals? Is it just Idaho? Yeah. In Moscow, in there. Moscow, the, yeah. there. That's the sister city to Pullman. Idaho State's in Pocatello, Merrill Hodge, uh, alma mater of uh, Idaho oh, State. That Find a all way. Time, all time great guess. Van, yeah, Vandals basically in the northern part of the state, right on the border of Washington. Uh, Idaho State basically in the southern corner, like the southeastern corner of Idaho. So it's actually quite close to Weaver State in Utah. Uh, probably their closest natural rivalry. Uh, all right, let's move along. Uh, the Southland Conference, Sean, is up next. They don't actually start until Sunday, the Lord's Day, but we will be, uh, we're not going to uh, dedicate an entire show to them. So we're just tacking it on here. 4 p.m. on the West Coast. We're heading to Lake Charles, Louisiana. Are we not going to talk uh, turn uh, futures first? Oh, I'm sorry. You're right. <laughs> it's getting excited. Talking futures. There's not much to talk about here. You're probably going to have some silly long shot take yep. when me and Colby aren't. Northwestern State, the sixth seed. Uh, Texas A&M, Commerce, the seventh seed, and New Nolens, the eighth seed. All 250 to one. Southeastern is five. The five seed, 85 to one. Nichols, the three seed, 27 to one. Lamar, the four seed, 20 to one. So then you drop down a massive tier here. Texas A&M, Corpus Christi, the two seed. They're plus four fifty, and McNeese, home of New Will Wade, the one seed minus four fifty. This is the conference tournament I was talking about earlier that stacks buys on buys. So McNeese and uh, Corpus Christi are in the semifinals already, uh, waiting uh, for the winners of these games. Lamar and Nichols already into the second round, and the playing round slash first round is just the bottom four teams. So. They definitely stack the deck for their home teams. That's why, you, or they're they're good teams. That's why you see the odds the way you see them. All the games are being played at the Legacy Center in Lake Charles, Louisiana. That's that's where McNeese is located. Oh yeah, uh, exactly. And it's presented by Explore Louisiana. So, so uh, this is Jer interesting. Jersey Mike's, by the way, real quick. Jersey Mike's has sponsored like a quarter of the bad conferences. Like all the bad conference tournaments are brought to you by Jersey Mike's. They're really getting after it, trying to get that sliced deli meat to everyone. All right, continue. <laughs> Southland Conference, McNeese, basically the host. Well, what what's interesting here is, I mean, McNeese, you know, ran through everybody, but Corpus Christi, Corpus Christi should have beat McNeese. McNeese uh, basically pulled a win out of their ass. They had to make the first free throw, miss the second intentionally, and then the ball gets deflected perfectly. To a uh, a guy who dunks it basically at the buzzer for the win against Corpus Christi, but I mean I think McNeese is going to win this thing. But uh, it's interesting. So with the transfer portal and this new ruling, with everything opening up, you're seeing all these coaches get fired now as opposed to maybe in a week or two. Um, Washington fired Mike Hopkins after he beat Washington State last night. So the the reasoning is is because the transfer portal. You want to be able to get as many transfers as you can get, and Will Wade is on everyone's hot list. So Oklahoma state, Louisville, uh, I would imagine Arizona state, Washington. I would think they're going to interview I maybe even, know. yeah, maybe even Vanderbilt because I think we'll wait. I've heard that it, he has family that is somehow connected to Vandy, uh, NC state maybe. So it makes it interesting. Is like, is this guy going to be interviewing while this tournament is going to be going on perhaps? Um, oh, yeah. but yeah, no, but <laughs> Will Wade? Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I just think with them, no, if this no, was at a neutral site, I would be all over Corpus Christi. But I think with it being in the in Lake Charles, uh, they didn't lose at I home you, this year. Dude. I know that's what I'm saying. And, and Corpus Christi should have got him on the road, not in Lake Charles. So I'll I'll go chalk with McNeese. Yeah, they beat Corpus Christi by seven at home. Uh, pretty much everyone else in the comp conference they they handled um, nicely. I'm gonna take a small sprinkle on Lamar uh, at twenty to one. They had a only a two point loss against McNeese State. Now, granted, that was at at Lamar, but they're second in the conference in offense, third in the conference in defense. If anyone 
can catch this uh, McNeese State team sleeping. Will Wade, uh, a little distracted on Zoom calls with some of these big, you know, just salivating it, getting the bag. Uh, I can just see him a- saying, "I'll make you a strong ass offer, Oklahoma State. I'll bring half <laughs> my <laughs> roster." I'll yeah, bring I'll half w- my roster. We leave right fucking now. Who cares about this th- this uh, this conference tournament thing? <laughs> yeah, he doesn't. I, I could see him. Uh, uh, I could see them. I could see Lamar knocking off McNeese. Can, State. Can, can I can I share something I've just learned? Sure. The Cowboys of McNeese State on December fifth played a university called Miss Universe for Miss Mississippi University for Women. <laughs> I I have quite have so many questions. They played the Mississippi University for women. What am I missing here? And they have a men's a, basketball team, apparently. I, is look, this a, we, is this a 2024 thing? What's, I was a skeptic when we caught it on the college basketball experience show. I said, "What?" And How'd you know, not, no, they 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 won the game by a lot of points. Um, but they use a men's ball. <laughs> I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I, I, I find it very interesting. And uh, yeah, uh, I mean, interesting. They, they, even Google gets confused because it's like, wait, do you want the women's basketball team or do you want them? <laughs> so I had they only scored you- 23 points, Sean. It was 92 to 23, which, which is what pistol Seems Pete like would do a, to Caitlin uh, Clark. Um, oh, wow. Oh, wow. Did I say Call that out Caitlin Clark? <laughs> All right, I, um, I, I've, I've, I'm looking at the schedule for the the men's basketball team at the uh, uni- the Mississippi. It's such a mouthful. Mississippi University for women men's basketball team. They're <laughs> seven seven and eighteen on the year. This they had to, do they they don't actually have a roster. They just play pickup or something, right? Like you, you guys want to play? All right, they're three and fifteen in conference. Uh, how all right? Let's. How many? Oh, interesting. They have uh, how many guys on the team do you think are taller than six foot six? Two. Two. Zero. <laughs> they have one guy who's six foot six. Everyone else is shorter than him. Um, That's just got to be a hard recruiting pitch. Come play for the Mississippi School of Women. E- or <laughs> easy. Hey, look at all yeah. this. Uh, look it's at true. all the. Look at your odds are really stacked in your favor. I'm going to say that maybe they have a lower academic requirement. Uh, give, oh, me, give, wow, me, give me, give me, give me Wow. Why do you say that? What, what do you mean? Uh, because oh, it's a university for women. They no, got to lower no, their no, academic no. standards. No, I'm saying that because Josh, edit this out. <laughs> I'm saying because they have uh, these, these clearly, um, you know, very low bar team three and 15 in conference men have been admitted since 1982. Interesting. That that's years. Twenty three percent of the student body. Wow, that is favorable. Whoa. I mean, I, I all of a sudden understand their uh, Hold on. pitch. What, what was that number? Twenty three percent. So seventy seven percent chicks. Seventy seven divided by twenty three. Well, that's. I mean, Noah's LeBaron would be chock full of tail. I'm not a math whiz, but that looks like three point three uh, five ladies per dude. Every guy's getting triple teamed. Uh, this is amazing. They teach grammar down there. A lot of wobbly H focus. All right, <laughs> that would be that would be the opposite odds, but yes. What do you mean? Well, that's a that's a female, a lady wobbly. Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> come on. Dude. All right, I don't know how that works. I'll have to do the math on that one. Uh yeah. I I mean, imagination uh, is. No, where you I start. can figure it out. All right, let's head over to Sunday. Uh, again, we're heading to Lake Charles, home of McNeese State. Will Wade? Will will when will? That's actually a fun. Uh, what happens first? McNeese State wins the conference tournament, or Will Wade accepts another uh, coaching job? Well, what do you think uh, if we if we talk to Cut? Do we? Uh, what do we set All right, the odds Colby. on? So this this tourney lasts until their championship game is on Wednesday, March thirteenth. <laughs> will 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 Wade? Except another head, co- <laughs> uh, a different head coaching job before the tournament. You know, the worst part about it is he will, but he won't go public. He won't yeah. go public with it. Um, or would he? Uh, maybe. It could, I mean, if if they're listening to his Does wiretaps, does he care about the Southland Conference tournament? <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I, <laughs> um. Yeah. I mean, I I think he'll be a coach somewhere else. Why? I mean, the, maybe the more fun thing is just what happens. Like, will what happens first? Uh, McNeese States plays in the in the NCAA tournament, or Will Wade accepts 
hmm. a new coaching job. Because to your point, Colby, if they're getting pressure to get these guys in, would he potentially leave before the March Madness game? No way, right? No, that's media. No. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, we just won. We broke it. It's not fun anymore. All right, New Orleans Southern. What are we doing? Uh, New Orleans uh, Southern. I. New Orleans Southern, New Orleans versus Southeastern Louisiana. So, but bo- bo- we're gonna get all these negative reviews. Colby, maybe get ahead of it. Uh, start doing some kissing some babies and shaking some hands. I don't know if we have. Uh, do we have a spread for this one? That I w- I don't know. I wasn't able to find. I, I didn't see these anything. guys already. Yeah. Uh, so we can um we can project. Prick Dundee calculators out there. We'll say, uh, what do you want to do, Colby? Maybe like six here. Four and That's a half, five. All right, we'll go five. We'll go yeah. five. Uh, so, so we're saying, just officially, you're saying Southeastern laying five? Yeah, and I'll lay okay. it. Uh, see, that makes me think the number's not big enough. I <laughs> I said six. He's like, no, 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 make it smaller. No, no, he no. wants to lay it. No, 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 no. I'm with Colby, uh, especially with this generous line of uh, minus five here. Southeastern is the better team, better at the line. Uh, beat them twice. I think they cruise here. Give me uh, Southeastern. I'll also lay it, but not because it's a bad number. Okay. I would lay it at six, just so you know, Kramer gang. All right, six thirty p.m. on Sunday. We have Com- Texas A&M Commerce, the seven seed, Northwestern State, the six seed. Uh, let's do uh, look some cal- some calculations. Commerce here. just beat him the other day. Uh, what do you what do you want to make it a pick them? I'd say Northwestern State minus one. Okay, and and I'll take the Demons minus one. <laughs> oh yeah. A little twist there. He he made the number and then he he made he took the bad side of it. All right, beautiful. Uh, I, I mean these are some bad conferences, bad teams. Uh, I was gonna say uh, take the dog. Give me Northwestern State. Yeah, Northwestern State at least has some non-dark red, and that's even that's, when you're only looking at conference. So bad. <laughs> Both of these teams, it's like, well, I can't I can't identify. I know they just won, which it was a triple overtime game too. Uh, Colby failed to mention that. So discourse is going to be on Texas A and M Commerce and New Orleans. Nice work, Discord. All right, all right. Hey, of course, the time for Hall of Fame bets. Head over to hofbets.com. Use the promo code SGPN. Get you fifty percent off your first month. The sports betting research platform for parlays, player props, and game lines. Hall of Fame bets has you covered. Uh, use code SGPN, get 50% off NBA, soccer, and college basketball dropping any day now. So sign up, get ready, get your 50% off, and get locked in for some March Madness parlays over at HOFBets.com. All right, I know Colby's got to go. Let's get, let him go first and mess up the juju. <laughs> Colby, uh, time for our best bets, March 9th. What do you got? I'm locking up the, the Kentucky Wildcats. Plus the points mm. in Knoxville. Wow. I also think this is not a bad dog option, uh, and I'm also going to lock up the Friars of Providence to cover the ten and and kind of a useless game for UConn. Uh, the dog is going to be Binghamton. They're going to win oh. outright. Binghamton's <laughs> going to get it done. Give me that. No. Nope. Give me that. Give me that Binghamton uh, golf course team to get it done, or or Baylor. Both both work. Parlay Binghamton and Baylor, and. Uh, mm-hmm. Subscribe to the college basketball experience. And uh, yeah, guys, I'm going to get out of here. All right, Colby. All right. For me, my lock, uh, also Kentucky plus nine and a half, way too high. I'm going to just roll the dice and say Providence on the money line. I think uh, Dunk will be rocking. Oh, I mean, it's a night game. What? I can't stress to you how amazing. Like, the, the, the early tip, the noon local time tip games have been crazy. Yeah. Uh, and then for me, uh, let's see. Or do I do? Yeah. And then uh, for my other lock, let's see. I really like Kentucky and Providence. Maybe I maybe I swap in Villanova, Houston. Yeah, I'm gonna actually put Houston minus eight. I think I think they're gonna be motivated. This line is telling you something, Ryan. It's telling you to take Houston. 
Again, Kentucky, I think that's way too many points for a matchup against Tennessee in conference. They've done really well on the road. That offense is going to keep them in the game. And then Providence, like you said, the environment's crazy. UConn doesn't need it. Providence can shock the world. Get in with the tournament with a win. Uh, give me the Friars there on the money line. Colby or Kramer? It normally is Colby there. So I muscle memory and all. Lock. You were right to put Houston in there. Lock. Duke. Oh wow. Money line. Kentucky. Woo wee. So do we do uh Kentucky Providence uh Binghamton parlay? Are you in on Binghamton, Ryan? I don't. Th- I mean, I'm. I. I don't think we need to get cute with our part. I mean, I'm fine if we want to put Binghamton in, but that kind of feels like the Salukis. Why not just Kentucky and Providence? Yeah, that's what I mean. Keep it simple for those of us who only did the the two. Well, did the two legs? But I, I lost the three legs. I wasn't. I wasn't arguing to put in Salukis there. That was. But uh, I. What I did do was that I, was one uh, Benedict Dundee. I know. I saw. Well, his that his his dog is Binghamton, so I wanted to avoid <laughs> that situation again. I was being nice about it. Yeah, I, I think just uh, those two parlay. Very nice. Very nice price. What four to one each? Let's go. Oof, that's, that's gonna, gonna pay be nice. Pretty juicy. Hey, we got more college basketball coming at you. Of course, download the SGPN app. Uh, get in on the free March Madness contest. Sportsgivenpodcast dot com slash champs. Thousand dollars up for grabs. March Madness, aka March Madness. 15% off everything when you use the promo code madness and uh tune in VEASAN. We will be live uh, in a few hours from now, six o'clock on the West coast, nine o'clock East uh, talking more hoops, NBA, little uh, draft props. We got it all. Thank you for participating in the sports gambling podcast for sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean second, the money green. He's Ryan hoops Kramer. Let it ride.